I often start sermons and classes with an audience participation question, so here's yours today. Name the most stressful time of the year. If you guessed Christmas, you've got the right answer. According to most counselors, they see an uptick in business in January because Christmas was so stressful. I understand that. I, I don't know if it's because we've watched so many Hallmark movies or we've got this big idea about what Christmas ought to look like and what our families ought to be like when we're together. But, but lots of times people put such unrealistic expectations on one another that there's no way they can live up to it. And so you've got these high hopes for Christmas being so much fun, we're going to be together and everything's going to be great. And then you get together and people fight and disappoint you and say stupid things and you're all mad. But you know what the problem is? It isn't your family, it's your expectation. The problem isn't necessarily that your family is such uh, horrible people, it's that you've expected too much from them. You expected them to be something they couldn't be. And that's unfair, both to them and to yourself. We need a different way to treat one another, I think. Rather than expecting everyone to make us happy and do what we want and keep us feeling good and never offend us or never do anything wrong, maybe we need a different picture. Here's one for you that I kind of like. I have this buddy named Jason. Jason and I have flown to several conferences and things in the States over the years. And, and uh, when we travel together, we have an unspoken rule between us. And that is, we will go to the airport, get on a plane, fly somewhere, and if we have a layover, we leave our gate and leave each other. If we're stopped in Denver, Jason will go this way and I'll go that way, and three hours later when our plane's about to leave again, then we meet at the gate again and fly on to the next place until we get to our conference and go to that. And then on the way home, if we're in Chicago, we get off the plane on our layover and he goes his way and I go my way. I don't think we ever planned that. I don't think we ever said it, but I like that. I like the idea that I get to visit with Jason and we get to hang out and we get to do things together, but we don't have to spend every last second together. He goes and reads books in a bookstore that he likes, and I wander up and down all the uh, places in the airport that I want to see, and a little bit of space along with your togetherness helps a great deal. And if we could give each other space like that, maybe not even just physical space, although that's good too, it's nice to go and do things separately so you can come back and have something to talk about. If you're always together, what would you ever talk about? You saw everything, you were both there. But not only just to give ourselves physical space, but just space enough to be who we are. Um, can we just let people be who they are and appreciate them for that? The, the writer of the letter to the Ephesian church, the Apostle Paul, writes in, in chapter 4 a great deal of um, instructions to them, lots of instructions about how we get along in the church and how to treat each other. He winds it all down in the very last verse of Ephesians chapter 4 by saying this. He says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ God forgave you. Verse 32, be kind and compassionate to one another. Couldn't we use some of that this day? Couldn't we use people who are kind and compassionate? Forgive each other as Christ forgave you. That's a pretty high standard. If I listened to that and if I treated people well, and if I didn't just put my expectations on them, but if I tried to appreciate them for who they are, I'd find I'd love people better. And they'd like me more too. Brothers and sisters, can we be kind and compassionate?